If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, we do a lot of talking in this episode about the differences between training naturally and training on anabolic Being steroids. all juiced up. Yeah, like what would the difference be? Do you need good to change your... Right yeah, here. a lot of really good stuff. And then we do some updates on our nutrition, uh, you know, Adam's testosterone levels. We talk about Justin's carnivore diet. I talk about the value of trigger sessions, which they always blow me away. We do mention a couple of our sponsors. We mentioned Everly Well, who does the... They do hormone testing. You could do it at home. We are sponsored by them. So you can go to everlywell.com, enter the code MINDPUMP, get 15% off any test. And then, of course, we also mentioned lots of meat because we talked about <laughs> Justin's carnivore diet. My savior, ButcherBox. There is a huge promotion with ButcherBox right now. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash MINDPUMP, you'll get free bacon. You'll get two ribeyes. You'll get $10 off and free shipping on your first order. Damn. They're giving away, and this is, by the way, high quality, high quality grass fed meat. Um, yep. Some of the highest quality you can find at competitive prices. Also, I do want to mention there's only six days left for the MAPS Anabolic 50% off sale. So, right now, MAPS Anabolic, the program to start them all, uh, is under $60. It's 50% off. There's only six days left. You can find it at mindpumpmedia.com. You can also find all of our bundles at mindpumpmedia.com. These are where we combine multiple mass programs for particular goals. We have a sexy athlete bundle. We have a build your butt bundle. And we have a super bundle, which is a year of exercise programming. Again, all of those, including the 50% off MAPS Anabolic, is at mindpumpmedia.com. Dude, I forgot how I always do this. I forget how fucking awesome you are. Trigger set. No, I don't forget that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, I gotta, you never forget that. No, I'm, you know, I, I honestly, I never, I, I forget how awesome trigger sessions are when done consistently. Like the difference between doing one trigger session a day or two and doing three. Three. It's like three is the magic number. Bro, here's what happens. Here's what you experience when you do trigger sessions properly. So you should be doing. They should last between five to 10 minutes. You're doing four, three to five exercises. It's low intensity. The goal is to get a little bit of a pump, feel a little bit of a burn in the muscle, and that's it. And what happens when you do them consistently is throughout the day, your pumps get successively, first of all, easier to attain and bigger. And it charges your energy levels up. Dude, I just did, so today, right now I just did my, and I haven't done trigger sessions consistently for a while, and I'm, I'm, I'm using them because of the, the contest that we're doing, mm-hmm. and it's been a while. And the thing about trigger sessions, and I get it, it can be a pain in the ass, especially if you're doing three a day because midday you got to stop and you know you got to do your thing or whatever. Once you get in the rhythm, though, it's awesome because yeah. it feels good. You make moments for it, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, initially, it feels kind of weird, like oh, well, I have to stop what I'm doing right now mm-hmm. and like do, but. Once you start to kind of get in the rhythm of it Dude. and you have bands like on you or whatever, even if it's just body weight, you Bro, can do it anywhere. The pumps I start to get throughout the day are just better and better and my muscles feel more charged and it's like, it's fucking magic. Dude. My favorite thing to do is to, I, I keep them up and ready to go on my closet door downstairs at my mm. house and because I have this tendency, sometimes I have these days where maybe I didn't get great sleep the night before, or we had a lot of stuff going on at work. And so I come home and it's four o'clock in the afternoon and I'm just feeling lethargic and tired. And I just, I could easily just plop my ass on the couch and stay there for like mm-hmm. the rest of the day. And, and when I'm, I have a chair that I sit in and the, the bands are directly right in, front of you. In, in sight. And so I'll, I'll I'll be looking at them going like, I don't feel like doing shit, but I need to get, and then finally I'll get up, I'll walk over there. I'm like, you know, okay, at least I'll go, I'll do, do a trigger session real quick. And it never fails me. Every time I do that, I get this, aside from the great pump, which is great, but you get this surge of energy mm-hmm. from it that just, it, it reinvigorates me to keep going for the rest of the day. So, and I strategically did that because I know that I have a spot in my house. I'm sure everybody does, right? Do you guys all have a spot where? I do. Yeah. I, well, now I have my be, If you're going to be lazy, you're going to yeah. just plant yourself there and not yep, move. Yep, yep, No, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's something that, you know, when I, when, when I first wrote Maps and a Ball seven years, know, six years ago, seven years ago, it was the one thing that I thought was going to be mind blowing for people. And, you know, I think people focus a lot on the phasing of the workouts, the 
exercise selection and all that stuff. And that's all very important. And of course, that's the foundation of it, right? Because without that, then it's not going to, you know, yeah, trigger seconds aren't going to do a whole if you, lot. If you don't, if yeah, you don't it's do not going to do a whole lot for you if you don't, you don't have that backup. Of Although that. I will say this, okay. I do believe that trigger sessions are part of what saved me during this whole going through the horm- hormonal shift for me because there was times where I couldn't even get motivated to go lift and hit the gym, but the, at least I could do some band mm. work for 15 to 20 minutes a couple times a day. And I did feel like that it helped with the atrophy. I felt like it, you know, it's hard to say because I can't measure that against another mm-hmm. time where I've gone through this exact same change or whatever. But for me, I know my body and how if I stop exercising and working out and my diet starts mm-hmm. reducing calories and I'm not moving very much, I see how fast my body loses muscle. And I really do feel like the the trigger sessions kind of help mitigate that a little bit. And, and I think another, you know, one way, and you can use them in different ways. Like the way I use them is traditionally is, you know, with a full body routine on the off days. And I do, you know, three times a day type of deal. But even people doing a split or doing their own routine, mm. I'll say, look, pick – a week, pick like two or three week body parts. That, so this is how I use it. Yeah. Okay. That's how I use it. I've, and I've always, and you used, just every day you I, do it's all cause I, the way I'm, you know, I've since day one on the show, I've, I've shared that I'm the guy who cares about the, the look of the physique, sure. right? That's, so that's kind of my, uh, motives, right? So when I go do trigger sessions, it's always lagging body parts. Mm-hmm. It's like, Oh, I could use some more rear delt work. So I'm using it to do like reverse flies on there mm-hmm. or, or I want more chest work, and so I'm mm-hmm. going to do chest flies on there. So I pick a couple muscles that I'm trying to increase the frequency on, and that's how I use the trigger mm-hmm. sessions. Yeah, the thing that trips me out is as you do them, like I said, throughout the day, you see you see and feel changes that day. And I don't mean like I'm building muscle, but I feel the pump. It hits me faster by the second one. By the third one tonight, when I do my last one, I'm going to get pumped after a few reps, which is mm-hmm. kind of crazy. Um, and then when I do them consistently on all my off days, by the second or third day, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like I added an extra week of working out or something like that or hard working out. My body just, I mean, like Doug was out there with me right now doing his, you know, his trigger sessions and he comments on the same. He was one of the first testers. I thought you guys were having sex. No. Yeah. That's no, what it, was, it sounded it like. It did sound no. a little bit like yeah. that. I don't sound like <sighs> that when I'm having sex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. I don't know. I, I bet. <laughs> Let's be honest. That last who, one was a Who weird. for sure makes the the worst noises while having sex? Justin. He <laughs> don't know that. You he haven't heard me. <laughs> but you're you're like an animal. For sure. For sure. It sounds. Like I mean, if he had if he had sex anyway, he eats. I don't make any noise. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Think of any. No, is there I'm anything like, that Justin does with finesse? I'm like a ninja. <laughs> Sex. <laughs> that would be funny. Uh-huh. He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, I'm like super delicate. You know, he's like like feathers. Are you really? No, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't think <laughs> so. Just you. I didn't think so. It's probably a mix of both. You know, it depends on the mood. You yeah, know, there, there yeah, be some animal that comes out. Who's most likely to like roll their girl over too hard aggressively or something or grab her too fast or too oh. hard or push her off the bed? <laughs> know, who's more likely out of the three? It could yeah. be me. Yeah. Yeah. Pro- he's probably. Like, he's like, I'm well, talking about my wheelbarrow moves. You know? <laughs> he's like, uh, last yeah. Tuesday, actually. Ro- <laughs> yeah. Rodeo wrestling, yeah, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. The problem is some some girls like that roughness, and so I think some guys take it too far like oh, oh you yeah, like a yeah, rub yeah, yeah. you know that's why you have to have like you know you have to have different gears bro i get yelled at i i, I they, only when they wanted to go in that gear yeah. you know, i'm gonna <laughs> warn you ahead of time i, I i'm capable yeah, yeah. i'm capable of a very wide spectrum i get i get uh katrina gets mad at me when i when i slap her ass when we're not having sex <laughs> why because then <laughs> she wants to have sex well no because she's just like Ah, she'll scream and she'll be like, "Don't do that!" I say, you like it, you like it all the time. And she's yeah. like, "Not when we're not having sex." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I said, "Oh, there's a time that you like it when you don't yeah. like." It. Okay, I, got I always it. picture uh, when you guys, I always picture with you guys where she, she like comes up to you and you're always like, "I'm not in the mood." Come on, let's no. Come on, she's got to kind of work it a little bit with you. Okay, <laughs> I mean like yeah. the reverse. Yeah, well, if I'm honest, that's kind of how the relationship is. For sure, she's the one who's always talking shit to me. Yeah. She talks shit to me. You know, what does I'm she really? Yeah, yeah. No, she talks shit to me. <laughs> You better fuck this pussy. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. I have a wow. I have a I have a weekly quota, bro. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. Or she's out, dude. Well, period well, or no period, it don't matter. Like she's if she's gonna take your man. If she don't get it, if she don't get it three times a week. Like I'm fucking put out. You're the done. Do- I'm in the yeah. doghouse. We'll see what sure. happens. I mean, you guys are you guys are if you guys have a kid, hopefully that maintains that way because it does change a lot for women after sometimes. Changes quite a bit after having. Kids. You know, so they lose it. For so this has been like a discussion time. between Not her sure. and her mom. 
And her mom just looks at her and she goes, honey, not in our family. <laughs> yeah, she tells her that not in our family. Adam's family. like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I, like, I need a break. Yeah, hopefully I'll slow down just a little bit. Yeah. But <laughs> supposedly it's in the it's in the genes. So. Yeah. No. Speaking of which, how is your, your libidos? Because you always use that as a gauge of your testosterone. I'm really, really excited for the next Everly Well test. So Because uh, you could feel a big difference. Yeah, yeah I don't know if I'm going to wait until the- You could see how excited you are. Well, so I, you know. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean- I. Again, this uh, you know the Everly Well test is different than what you go do at the, to go the get blood your, test. your blood test. They use different markers, but they basically use the same parameters. Right? They just use a different way mm-hmm. of uh, measuring it. Right? So it's a number like fifty six, I think, is what we were mm-hmm. or what I was. Excuse me. And so the fact that I'm in the low normal range and that my body fat percentage was over fourteen percent, I'm really excited to see when I get down to like ten percent body fat or so. To see where I'm at. And now, do you con- feel different versus when you did it last I, time? I do. Hmm. Yeah. For sure, my libido is higher than it's been in a, almost a year. Because it's been it's been eight months, a little over eight months now. What are we in? We're in July, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're, we're in the middle, almost in July. And it's been, so it's been eight full months of zero testosterone. And then the since November of last year, I was really low as far as how, how low I was tapering down. I think back then I was doing like a half a CC every every two weeks, I think that was what mm-hmm. I was at for mm-hmm. a while. That was back when you were telling me like, hey. Go slow. Yeah, go really slow. And so I had been tapering off. You have did everything the right way. So if it's going to work, you, you've given it the best chance. You've done everything right. You've, you, you took the advice that I got from you know one of my doctor clients, which was to slowly, slowly taper down. You did the post cycle therapy, uh, you know, both conventional and unconventional. Um, you've you've done the sleep and proper exercise, nutrition. You know, you've done the the, the red light therapy, um, and your knowledge of exercise and nutrition. You know, incorporate like you've done everything right. So I think if anybody has a chance of recovering after you know a six years of continual. You know, uh, testosterone. Yeah, testosterone use. It's gonna be it's gonna be you. Well, you know, it's. And I think that's important to note is that it's, I think it's taken all of those things. I think like, and I get a lot of people that inbox me and like, you know, that are going through the same thing. You'd be surprised how many people it's nasty, dude. are in a very similar situation. It's a shitty city situation at, to be in. As I am. I get a ton of, it's probably the most popular thing that I get DM'd for now. So is somebody else that's asking, uh, you know, testosterone, hormonal type questions and, you know, what have I done protocol? And I, I've really done it all, you know, and I've really done my best to be as consistent with all of it as I possibly can. And I really believe that it's taken kind of all of it. I don't think I think when you're dealing with something so serious like that or severe, I don't think that. One, I don't think a juve light is going to take me by itself. Yeah, by itself. Mm-hmm. I don't think you know just taking some some su- herbal supplement is going to take me take me there. I don't even think that a single cycle or two of HCG or PCT. Many times it doesn't work. Yeah, I, I, I had I'd already done that a couple mm-hmm. times, and I, I you know initially sure when I was taking the HCG I felt good on it. You know, like it was oh, I, and I would get me excited like and then it oh, would wear off. yeah. Then I then I go, come when off. When was your last <clears> one? Uh, about a month and a half ago. So if you're going to feel a dip, you should be feeling it now, right around now. Now, and yeah. I'm not. If anything, I feel in any, it, like I better. Feel, yeah, I feel better. Yeah. So the last time I did an HCG uh, four-week run, I, I felt really good. Obviously, during it, I felt good for about two weeks after it still, and then I started and to kind of- start to dip. Yeah, yeah, where right now I'm over over a month- of not using it, and I feel that I've sustained See, this that. This is the number one reason why when, because I get this question daily. Every day somebody asks me, hey, what do you think? I want to try getting on, an, on a cycle. What do you think is a safe way to do it? What do you think? And the, and the number one reason why I recommend people don't is that, like, at some point in your life, you're going to want to go off. And that's going to be a very difficult process and it's going to suck. And what you're going to feel while you're going off is you're going to regret that you ever went on in the first place. I bet you, I bet you right now, besides the learning process and growth you got from it. So that's obvious because I'm the kind of person I'm like, I think we're all like this where I don't necessarily regret anything because I grew from it and learned from it. But let's just say you could get all that still and you went back in time. Would you have convinced yourself never to do them? And I think most people mm. would probably say yes. 
Yeah, no, I definitely. What will be interesting? So I'm really curious. And like, this is you know, I'm curious about myself. Like, what will I do? Like, I'm, what I'm really good about is saying never saying never. Right? Like, I don't mm. believe in saying like, sure, I'll never do this again. No you ultimatums. Know? Yeah, like I just know that I wouldn't. I would never put myself because who knows? Maybe I will. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I will want to. I don't know. But I I do feel this desire to never have that feeling that I just had before. And so I do feel like th- if there comes a time, you know, in the next year, two, three years, where I I think I want to run a cycle, I think that it'll be very easy for me to pull back this feeling mm-hmm. that I just have gone through for the last year, especially since I'm I'm telling you guys right now that I feel great, I feel good. But even that that's all relative. I feel good, great compared to what I felt like six months ago. I still don't feel it's hell. I, yeah, I still don't feel like me. You know what I'm saying? I don't I'm not crushing the gym. Like I'm used to like going to the gym and like working out and feeling amazing mm-hmm. before and after the workout. Like I've just now moved away from feeling like it was fucking torturous work to go to the gym and do the things I need to do to like oh, I'm starting to enjoy it now. It's like um this is cool. Like I'm enjoying seeing progress a little bit my body too like one of the things that was really really hard was doing all the exercise putting the work in that i needed to and not seeing the change being somebody who prides himself on being able to flip the switch and like dial everything right in like i'm really good at that i mean all all the competitions that i had to do over the last three and a half years or whatever really trained me well on like when i make this mental switch i have the like I said, everything down to my music. Like I have this system of what mm-hmm. I do with my music, what I do with my water intake, what I do with my food and my tracking and my weighing and my measuring and my steps. And like I have the, and it's like when I, I was doing those things and my body was not responding. And that was like, fuck, that mm-hmm. was really, really tough. So at least now I'm seeing it. But I tell you what, you know, of course the natural game is completely different than the, you know, unnatural game. Yeah. It's, do you now? Do you feel like you're having to, you're going to have to relearn or learn how your body responds now differently than before, or do you think because you're so acute in terms of listening? I think that I think what made me so successful at competing and how I moved up so fast was that I applied all my all natural science and knowledge to with steroids. I think that I think that's the mistake that a lot of anabolic guys do and girls do is because they're on it and there is so much room for air that it doesn't force them to like really hone in like their skills and knowledge of nutrition and exercise Mm -hmm. science and really understanding human physiology like you just don't have to like if you just fucking train hard and eat a lot of food you're gonna gain you just get away with a lot yeah you get away with a lot more now the i think i move i mean i never i never cut longer than any as long as anybody did like my most shows Four weeks, four or five weeks. I think the longest I I think for the USA's was my longest cut. I did six weeks. I've never cut longer than that because I always kept myself relatively close to the body weight that I, body fat that I wanted to be at going into a show. I did it a very healthy way. I never did more than two weeks of like real strenuous getting up early type of cardio or anything like that. So I, I think that the only di- and the thing that I see now is it's just it's a slower response time. Like when I when I start tweaking things like in the when I was on something it's like instant results right away like I would I would see change like day every day every day I'm getting better and better and better and better where now it's like I feel like they're three to five day shots meaning like ever I, I can't I can't be so hard on myself day to day I have to look at myself more at three to five days and go like okay be very I need to be extremely consistent with everything that I'm doing uh, let's evaluate myself at the beginning of the week and at the end of the week to to measure my progress or mm-hmm. lack of progress. Where before, I can make changes daily and like this, mm-hmm. see the how response. I think the biggest change is going to be uh, not. I'm not comparing. And re- not com- yeah, and not comparing when you were on your competitive doses. I'm talking about when we're comparing to your replacement doses because uh, there's a big big difference between right. competitive doses and natural. And uh, replacement doses are natural. When you're on replacement, your testosterone levels are supposed to be maintained in the upper end of normal. That's what testosterone replacement is supposed to do, right? So you're 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 similar to someone who's natural who has high testosterone naturally in that sense, but you still have some other advantages. Like another like a, here's a big advantage. A big advantage to somebody who's on replacement testosterone versus someone who isn't 
is your testosterone levels are elevated in the upper range regardless. Right. Regardless of what you do. Regardless of sleep, regardless That's of- That's right. Yeah. Like I could test my testosterone today and it could be high in the, nat- in the natural range and I'm a natural guy and I could easily tank my testosterone <clears throat> with two, three days of shitty lifestyle, drinking, not going to bed, whatever. I could hammer my body for two or three. I could even work out too hard for two or three days and just beat the crap out of myself, get my testosterone levels checked, yeah, and I'd have well. a 50 to 70% drop. So check this out. So this is something I haven't shared yet. That uh, And it's it's quite frustrating. I find it a blessing in disguise somehow too. So my gynecomastia is fucking extremely sensitive. Mm. And what one of the things that it, what would get me to go back on testosterone, the therapeutic dose, is that it kept that at bay. When I was taking a therapeutic dose, I had a nice level of testosterone. It kept my gynecomastia s- suppressed. Because your estrogen to testosterone ratio was good or whatever. So I, I didn't, no sensitive nipples, nothing. I didn't see any fat tissue at all like that. You couldn't tell. Where now, that changes day to day for me. Mm. Like some mornings I'll wake up and it hurts to touch. It's so sensitive. Oh, your hormones f- are still bouncing out. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. it's Because uh, eventually what will happen is... is you'll have way less of it and it'll almost go away. It could also be, have you started to reduce cannabis consumption? So I have played with that and it does help. Mm-hmm. It does help for sure. Like if I, if there, if, it, if it'll exasperate it, if I, if I actually start smoking a lot or have a, a day where like w- weekends, if I, if I smoke in the afternoon or anything like that, it's typically on a weekend. I wouldn't do that during the weekday. So I notice it flare up more mm-hmm. uh, with the, the extra use of cannabis. So yeah, that does. But even with or without that, uh, I actually food food does it. And Which I, foods? I don't know. I said, that's what I don't know. For Interesting. Sure. I'm not sure, but I do know. You're not eating soy. Yeah, I was gonna say that's sure. I have soy. One. You have soy. Really? Sure, so for sure. I get soy. I have. I get uh, sushi all the time. So that's in the diet. Mm. So that it's what, not the, just the edamame. No, no, no. I I dip. Oh, my the soy, soy sauce. sauce. Yeah. Mm. Oh, how often are you eating that? Once a week. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah. Right. But you might be but, but so I, sensitive. Yeah. And I, oh yeah, I'm that sensitive that like if I- like, I would look at all your products too. Look at your hair products, look at your skin products, your mm. deodorant, look for xenoestrogens and that kind of stuff. Because you may be so sensitive that even that may be causing some kind of a reaction. Yeah. I, well, most of that stuff has been pretty pretty damn consistent. Pretty good now. Yeah. My, well, consistent my whole life. And you know, I use like- an, You're just more sensitive now though. Hmm. It may be. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. I it, And it's there's times where it's not. Like I consistently, you know, wash my body, brush my teeth, use my deodorant, you know, so those things are, are extremely consistent where I will. And it, it's something related to my diet. And I'm not 100% sure what it is. I've tried to tease. This will be a good time while I'm going through all this. I'll tease some things out. But I, I, I definitely do. Some days I'll wake up and I can't feel it at all. I can't feel it. I feel great. It feels totally fine. And then a day later, all of a sudden I'll feel it and it's <laughs> super sensitive. Do you get, when's your la- when was your last uh, general physical? Uh, last two years ago. Yeah, I would get two years not ago. not I'm not trying to freak you out, and I doubt that this was it. This is it, but you should get your liver enzymes checked and see if your liver is actually getting rid of estrogen the way it's supposed to, because mm. sometimes that could be a, a byproduct. There's a supplement you could take called uh, milk thistle. No, that's for liver. Yes, that might help indirectly, but directly, DIM. Don't know what the full name of it is, but DIM helps your liver convert estrogen into a less potent form of estrogen and see if that lowers. The risk of that happening. But that's interesting. But it, it, it could also just be that you're off everything and your estrogen and testosterone levels are still trying to balance out. Yeah, yeah. it's really, it's weird. It's But that's it's been quite some time though now, mm. you know? So to still see, and, and like I said, I'll have streaks where I'll have a few days in a row where I feel amazing and then all of a sudden something will throw it off. And definitely the cannabis thing, I've I've put that together. That, that absolutely does. Yeah, you know, it's funny yeah. too, as I was doing more research on cannabis and- for sure, it, it reduces sperm motility and sperm count in people in, in, when they take high doses. And in animals, it consistently does affect hormones. Now, in humans, the, the, the results are kind of mixed. But the way I look at it is, you know, if you're using, if you use cannabis for medical purposes, I mean, okay, that's fine. If you don't use it for medical purposes, do you really need to use cannabis more than once a week or something like that? It's kind of a lot, right, for most people if you yeah. really think about it. Mm. So I've kind of reduced mine as well. Um, and now I'm down to like once or twice a week. It's funny. I went, I did go through withdrawal for a couple of days. You said if, that. Yeah. I had like weird, vivid dreams, dude. And I was restless. 
Really? That really pissed me off, by the way. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? I actually built, a, I had a, you know, I'm having withdrawal from yeah, something. Yeah, you actually built up something there that uh, you felt effects of that on not having it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel well, like you're using it more for like sleep, like on a consistent basis? I was just, right? you know, I had it for medicinal reasons for my gut. And then I just got in the habit of using it on a semi regular basis at night because it does feel nice and you relax and, you know, you hang out with your girl or you watch something cool on TV. And then I started thinking to myself, like, why, you know, if I don't have it, how does that make me feel? Mm. And it kind of makes me like, oh, I want it. And then that made me question, okay, I'm going to reduce my usage because I don't like to feel attached to anything. Yeah. yeah. I don't care what well, it is. Well, that was my purpose of even suggesting us doting doing a, like a 30 day fast. It had nothing to do with, like, I'm not anti it. I'm not trying to stop it or it's not like a, a habit I'm trying to cut. It's just that I don't ever want to have something that I feel like. I need to do like I, I like to have full control of my body and know that I have the discipline to implement something like that and say, hey, I want to fast from something from 30 days and not mm -hmm. do it or whatever. I just haven't done it yet because every time I, I decide to do it, like, nah, this is too good of a time for me to smoke. That's, right? what, I'm <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The funny know? part is, though, like, you know, I've 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 had things where I've battled addiction before and stuff. So I'm very aware of what what that feels like. And the, the hardest is probably what opiate. Yeah, that's, that's got to be the nasty physical that's... withdrawal. Yeah, that was not. There was nothing. Although like... the testosterone, I don't think is acutely as bad they're, as, but it lasts longer. They're both. They were both were fucking monsters. They both have been. I mean, it's like, I mean, I guess the one of the things that I appreciate having gone through it is that I I think that now I have something that I can share and provide for somebody who may may struggle with mm -hmm. this or been through it or even considering doing some of it. It's like. I think the best thing you ever did with that, because I do the same thing, is I tell people mm -hmm. that I'm going to, yeah. and then it kind of helps helps me stay accountable. Oh man, you know that's, what I mean? Like if I keep it to myself, then it's like uh, my you know. favorite. I mean, mm -hmm. fuck, who knows if if Mind Pump would be where it's at today had I not done that way back with with Instagram. Like that was the beginning of like the you know building a you know quote unquote social media business was. You know, I'm going to put it out there. Like I, I remember waking up and going like, holy shit, I'm in the worst shape of my life, you know, at 30 years old right now. And I remember going like, I've been talking about starting this whole Instagram thing and building a social presence. Like this is putting that out there. Like, so that's what I loved Instagram for. I loved like for, at least for me, it works so well because I am the type of person that's very committed to something that he says. If I profess it, if I say I'm going to do something, like I'm the person that won't say shit. Like if I'm mm -hmm. even, if I, I think about doing a lot of things. There's a lot of things I'm like, oh, I might want to do that. Say oh, unless yeah. you know. But I don't say it. But if I come out and go like, I'm going to do this, it's f I will fucking well, it's do it. It's the same with, the, I mean, the podcast. And that's why like these challenges and stuff, it's like, it, I, I, I stay reserved because when I do commit to something, it's the same thing. It's like, yeah, I'm doing it, you know, 100%. Like there's no... I, I don't have a problem with dis discipline. That's not my problem. It's a matter of like priorities and like uh, a hierarchy of things and what's working with my lifestyle. So it's like, yeah, of course, you know, like I can ratchet it up at any time, dude. I'm ready and willing, but like to say it and to verbalize it and to have people kind of rally and know what you're doing is a mm. totally different thing. That's what I appreciate probably the most about you guys is I know that you guys, I know if you're going to say something like, oh, this is what I'm going to do. Like, well, that's what's going to be done. There's no question in my mind that you're gonna do what you what you've said you're gonna do. Most people are not like that. That's integrity, man. It is. It's, yeah. one of, it's for sure one of the most attractive qualities I find in other humans, mm -hmm. and it's one of the most unattractive things when people don't have it, man. Oh, yeah. it's, it's it's such it's, a hard just, thing for me to deal with when people is. are like it's that. It's annoying that it's hard to find. You know, like I just wish that was the the standard you know like let's all just be what you say you're gonna be like like if you you know are a man or a woman of your word you, you guys know, think like, that's I'm getting hold you to that you think it's getting better or worse like worse yeah. I, I think it's gotten worse for a long time you know it wasn't that long ago where if you shook somebody's hand you just shook their hand yeah like that was it you did it and we that didn't was need bond. lawyers and we had sorry lawyers and, and socially speaking if you didn't adhere to that handshake, you were you were a pariah. Like right. nobody wanted to be around you. Right. You're dead to everybody else. Today, people will brag and be like, "Well, we didn't sign a contract." I actually had somebody do that to me once, and we did sign a contract. And they told me, and they still tried to to come, you to know, weasel. On yeah, to we yeah. I had to take them to court, and it was so stupid. Yeah. And I hated doing it because I, I looked at the person. I'm like, 
you know as well as I do what you agreed to. We even signed this thing oh, yeah. that has your signature, and yet you're still. That is how do you? I don't uh, know how you would live to your, with yourself. You know, completely. Those people just uh, you're dead. You're dead to me. Like I'm done with you. Like if you're that kind of a person, like you're just gonna be filtered out of my life. Don't you think those people though, like internally, have so much shit that they have to deal? Like I feel like as much as that like was frustrating for you, right? Like the fucking sucks that you had to deal with that. But I always try and think like, you know what? At the end of the day, like this sucks for me. I have to deal with this bullshit. I'm angry, but I'm, you know what? I feel more sorry for that person because they got to live with themselves oh, yeah. for the rest of their life. Oh, it was like, hard for me to even to, 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 to go the rest of your life, mm -hmm. you Keep know, justifying these like shitty decisions. Knowing you're a fucking fraud and a pretender, you know, like that, yeah. what a, it shitty, was hard what a for me, shitty way to go through life. It was hard for me to take that person to court for that reason because I actually mm -hmm. felt bad mm -hmm. for them. And the reason why I did is because I did, I am also simultaneously the person that, I'm very assertive and I will not be taken like you will not walk over me. I don't care what it costs. Right. I'm not going to let somebody do that to me, especially if it's because they think I'm a nice guy. And that's, I know what happened. Yeah. They thought, well, Sal's a nice guy, so I'm going to get away with this. And that's what made me, yeah. that's what gave me my resolve. But otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm the, this is the kind of person I am. Let's say we make a bet, right? Let's say we, we, okay, how about this? We did make a bet. We made a, a hilarious bet about a year and a half ago here at the studio I was far away from the little basketball hoop with garbage. <laughs> I had a piece of paper in my hand, and I and, and I'm like, I, you do this? he's gonna get his car. Don't no, worry, no, 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 no. Here's get, the oh. thing. I'm this. I'm not joking about it because I don't think you won't do it because I know Mary you won't. But car. I I'm like, oh, I bet I can make this basket. It was hella far away, and Adam's like, if you do, I'll buy you a car. And I threw it and it went in, and now Adam's like, oh shit, I got to buy you a car. Now here's the deal, and I'm the only reason why I'm saying this because I know Adam has incredible integrity, and it, it so it's it's not an issue. But let's say we're two years into the future financial times are hard and Adam buys a car and I know he's struggling and he, or he goes and attempts to do it because he knows, you know what I'm the kind of person I'm going to do? I'm going to be like, listen, man, I know, I know I lost that bet and I appreciate you trying to do this, but you don't need to do that. You know what I mean? You got to save your money, whatever. But if he was the kind of person that was like, no, I'm not going to do it, man. That was stupid. It's a stupid bet anyway. Then I'm going to push. I'm gonna be like, right. hold, it, hold your feet to the fire. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. You know, that's the kind of person I am. So, yeah. But I do think that a little bit of that is, I think a little bit of that is lost you know, today. Yeah. And, I, and it's too bad. So anyway, I want to get back to what we were talking about earlier, which is uh, training while on gear and training while natural yeah mm -hmm. like let's talk about the biggest i guess the biggest difference let's talk about the benefits and then the misconceptions right because i think that a lot of people think it's like the magic sauce mm -hmm. and, but then also at the same time uh you know it, you're only going to get the the maximum amount of benefit if you yeah. you know apply it correctly well i always like to point to a study that i read a long time ago it's kind of it was it was popular at the time because the muscle magazines were, were printing it because it was so hilarious but they would take they took groups of men and compared them to each other over a I think it was like an eight or twelve week period and to to see how much more muscle people would gain on anabolics. Now the reason why this study was so popular was because they actually used doses that the common person would use. Like in the past there were studies on anabolics and they give people like these low doses. But these guys I believe were given two or two or three hundred milligrams of testosterone, which isn't super high, but that's what a dude you know, who lifts weights in the gym will we'll probably start with. Mm. And the, there were three groups or three or four groups. One group of men took steroids, worked out. The other group of men worked out with no steroids. The third group of men didn't work out and took steroids. And the fourth group of men did nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, of course, who do you think built the most muscle, right? The steroid working out group. Right. Second place was where it was shocking. The guys that took steroids and didn't work out, they still grew. Actually, built more muscle than the guys who worked out who didn't take steroids. Yeah, which says a lot. <laughs> it does. It's, a, <laughs> it's kind of fucked up. Yeah, it is. Now I think that's because it was a short week, per you know, period. Sure. You, you right. extend and, that over time. And, and again, this whole anabolic signal thing, which you've stressed, you know, with like when coming up with maps and stuff, it's it's definitely part of the recipe that uh, you know it. It gets your body to respond and to, you know, it, it provides this sort of uh, stimulus to overcome yeah. the its environment. Yeah, I mean, you take if you take the average dude who lifts weights, and maybe he's whatever he's lifting weights and eating, and he's plateaued, right? Let's say he hasn't gained any muscle for a year, and he's just training, and he goes on a decent 
cycle of anabolics, you probably gain anywhere between eight to sixteen pounds oh, yeah. of muscle. Just mm-hmm. doing the same thing. Just doing the same thing. Yeah. Problem with that is that guy when he gets off, it all goes away too. He doesn't learn there anything. It is. Yeah. Doesn't learn anything. Yeah. No, that's uh, there's there's things that I can tell. Um probably the biggest thing of everything that I notice right now is recovery. Um, I know that I'm I'm not even hitting it that intense and I, te- I tend to be more sore right now. Mm. Like I can tell that my body's not rec- recovering at as fast of a rate. So I see that. Which um, means you can't <clears throat> cycle through the intense right. workouts as quickly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So you, you can't it, repeat them quite as frequently. Right. right. So in the past, you know, uh, I would just go to the gym every single day and there would always be. Now I find myself like, you know what? I should probably just take today off. Like, mm-hmm. or maybe I'll just do some trigger mobility or walk where mm-hmm. I would go get after it because I know, like, oh, I'd rather push the limits a little bit because I know that I'm enhanced. So I I do notice recovery, um, I, and then the the mental stuff too. Like, there's a lot there's a lot that you get from the mental side. Like, you know, when I was when I'm on testosterone, it's crazy. Like, I I dream about my workouts the next day. I can't wait to get to the gym. As mm. soon as I touch the weight, I because every workout is fucking <clears throat> epic, great pump and awesome. epic. Yeah, every workout is epic. You know, it's it's almost almost every workout you can see strength gains. Mm. I mean, that doesn't happen in the natural world. No. In the natural world, you have it's more of an ebb and flow and up and down a little bit. Like it's oh this work it, I just did pull, yeah. right like it, maybe I like so I just did squats yesterday. Okay. And so I'm prepared. I know this, okay, because it's not my first time, obviously, training naturally. It's just been a long time since I have. You know, I'm getting ready to go into squats. Well, this is the the second time I've lifted heavy on squats in the last month or so. And when I'm going into it, of course, I want to see myself as strong or stronger than what I was three, four weeks ago. But I didn't, you know, I was, you know, I was a little bit less. Like, in fact, I I squeezed out five reps of something that I only squeezed out three reps yesterday. Mm -hmm. But... My calves are fucking hella sore because I did my calves for the first time like four days ago oh, and they're yeah. still sore. Mm-hmm. You know, my hammies were sore still from doing some hamstring work a few days before that. So I was still not, I wasn't fully recovered and rested. And so it really hindered that workout where in the past, one, I probably still wouldn't even be sore from that if I was on anabolics. And two, I would be able to push through that. And three, the gains come on so fast that it would almost negate that. Mm-hmm. So these are some of the things that you you start to notice with without the anabolics like okay i have to take the, all this stuff into account you know yeah this- it makes me wonder you know because like I'll, I'll i know a lot of people in our industry and, and a lot of them have taken anabolics consistently for years which is which in and of itself is kind of interesting it wasn't like that like 15 20 years no, ago no when i first did it it was like cycles. It, was, it was a big deal to go longer than like 8 weeks yeah 12 weeks was like oh shit yeah, that, you're that doing a, 12 weeks i remember i was scared to do 12 mm-hmm. like i did like little 6 to 8 week cycles yep. when i was younger because i was scared to death and then i finally had somebody i mean years later go like oh man you got to you got to run that for a little bit longer than yeah. 8 weeks yeah. dude you run that thing for like 12 weeks no problem and, then and, then you see see 16 s- weeks and now, now it's become <clears throat> like a lot of guys that i know who are in our space years they well, don't, they don't yeah. go off well in my my peer well because i think the science has come out now where back then there was still this big scare of testosterone like oh what could happen mm-hmm. to you and and so i'm wondering if it's better to go on and off for natural test it's got to be right for for your body's natural testosterone levels who was it that was actually just debating that with us or mm-hmm. not debating was sharing information with us who was that we just talked to him just a few days ago um uh, fuck, I don't remember. Anyways, we'll, we'll probably wanna, roll him under the bus if we bring. Yeah, him that's in. why I'm not yeah. saying. Right, right, right. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, that's we'll what, go okay. ahead and keep talking. Yeah, 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 we won't roll our friend under the bus. But anyways, he was sharing that he actually was saying that he was reading somewhere that it's it's more advantageous to stay consistent with it at, at, at moderate levels. Yeah, I, mm. so I so here's what here's what a lot of people do, especially smart people, is they'll 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 be like most of the evidence will be counter. Mm-hmm. Then they'll find one piece of evidence that supports what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, that's the one I'm going to oh, clean good. up. Oh, good. I like this, this one. This is true. Yeah. yeah I'm I mean, cherry everybody, pick that. everybody does that. Yeah. Right? I don't think staying on all the time for years is going to make it easier for your natural testosterone levels to come back versus going on and off and allowing well, Wouldn't it start to, sort of replacing natural production? It does right away. Right. If you go on, here's a funny thing people don't realize. I could give you one shot, one 
of testosterone right now, and your natural amounts, your natural levels will automatically of course. The body start to senses, decline. Yeah, we've got more than yeah. we need. And then if you don't go on another one, then they kind of kick back up. The longer you stay on, most of the literature shows that the harder it is to for your body to. Well, I mean, I've that's what I've experienced. I feel like because I was on a therapeutic dose too for yeah. a very long time, which is not much at all, but. I had a harder time just recently coming off than I did ever before as a kid where I'd mm-hmm. run these little six to eight I feel like cycles. you may start to cause more permanent damage or long-term damage where the cells that are responsible for producing testosterone in your body, as those atrophy or stop producing testosterone, and then they stay that way for a long time, you got to keep this in mind with the body. It, your body doesn't keep what it doesn't oh, need. It prunes it. Yeah, if because it, otherwise it's a waste of energy, and your yeah. body's always trying to become more efficient with energy. So, if you know, use it or lose it, right? Remember that old saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you're not using it, and your body's constantly sensing exogenous testosterone, so it's not gonna or exogenous, as, as Doug would say, test. Exo- oh, did I say it right that time? Good. <laughs> Doesn't produce testosterone. I feel like your body's gonna be like, well, we don't need these cells anymore. I think mm-hmm. we could just kind of get rid of them, and then that becomes, you know, that's that's now your new normal. So, but you know, that's the thing nowadays well, is people stay on for a long time and it makes me wonder, like I'll meet someone and you know, they're, you know, big, wonder, wonder what they would look like without Well, and it makes me yeah. speculate too, like if you start like really like losing the ability to produce your own natural testosterone and that being its version from your own body, like your own body's producing this versus, you know, exogenously you're, mm-hmm. you're introducing this, like how high a grade is that regardless of how pure you think it is, you know, in terms oh, of another- like- yeah, just in terms of like what you're injecting into your body versus what you could produce. That's a whole other problem because you know you're dealing with the black market. Well, the other the other problem too is is thinking, and this was my mistake as a young you know 20 year old that was messing with it, is thinking that it is so magical and thinking that oh man, it, this is because I really believe that what was separating me from the guys on the covers of magazines because I was a trainer, I thought I was knowledgeable, I thought I knew about diet, I thought I knew about exercise, I worked hard, you know, but I didn't look nowhere near what these guys look like. They must all be on steroids and that's what's separating me from looking like that. So let me try and do this. And then it was like, oh, let me try one cycle and then didn't get shit really from it. And then it was like, well, people are like, oh, well, your first cycle, some people don't really feel it or notice it. So, okay, let's do a second cycle and see what happens. And it was like, okay, well, now I notice I get strength. Well, maybe I'm not eating properly for it because, man, when I the first couple that I had did, I have this ectomorph body type. I'm super active. I was still playing basketball. Student. I was still wasn't fueling the body enough calories. So... I was you just strong. didn't give it the building block. Yeah, I didn't give it, exactly. I didn't give it the nutrients that it needs. Like, I mean, I was getting stronger in the gym. Like, I could feel my strength go up because I was anabolically enhanced. But then I wasn't fueling my body with enough nutrients for me to pack on muscle and actually hang on to it. So I put up a f- couple pounds. I mean, mm. I went up like. But five. you got a good straight gains. You said. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you know it's real. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because that's the other thing too. Sometimes I think guys are like, it "Doesn't work." And it's like, <laughs> oh no, there was there was <laughs> you're no injecting sesame oil. <laughs> there was yeah, yeah, right. yeah. There was no doubt. Yeah, check your dealer. There was no doubt that what I was taking was the real deal because I 100%. And then I felt, I mean, I had erections around the clock, mm. you know, so that was all crazy. That I noticed that the, the erections and I noticed the strength in the gym, but I didn't put size on until way later, until like maybe my fourth or fifth time mm. running a cycle that I realized like, oh shit, I need to really push the calories or and or reduce my movement because I'm just, I'm still, my my number one problem with building muscle my entire life was nothing to do with anabolics. It was always the, the challenge of getting enough calories for my body. I'm a tall, lanky guy who moves a lot, is active, I'm fidgety. You also don't naturally have a huge appetite. Right. I've I noticed that I, about you. I naturally don't have a huge appetite. I have everything working against, I mean, I have a small skeletal structure, like everything about me is said I'm supposed to be this tall, skinny swimmer who doesn't need a lot of calories. Like that's, mm-hmm. it's not this bodybuilder guy. So it's taken a lot of work and it's, you know, the, the blessing in it is that it's, it's taught me, I, I, I've been forced to learn a lot about nutrition and human physiology and exercise science and really understand that in order for me to take a body type that really is not meant to be in the bodybuilder category and then turn it into a bodybuilder physique. I would, I, you know, I, I'm going to speculate here because I've experienced the the you know the designer uh, steroid over the counter stuff, and I did I would do four to eight week cycles of that stuff, and for all intents and purposes, I was taking anabolics, and so I did notice a big difference. And I'm going to make a speculation here and say that 
intensity becomes more important when you're on anabolics and frequency uh, becomes a little bit more important when you're natural. And what I mean by that is, you know, when I was on Absolutely. those when I was on those cycles, I could do these you know, these traditional body part splits where I would hit a body part once a week, but if I hit it hard and really really hard, I would build more muscle. When I was natural, that shit didn't work. I had to hit my body more frequently and be smart with intensity. So it's like, okay, I'm hitting my whole body three days a week now, but now I need to work out easier on some days and harder on other days and have to phase them. Whereas before, it was like, oh, if I want to grow, I just got to work out harder, which which maybe – and here's the thing with the muscle building industry. A lot of the information that's filtered down and, and feeds what we think to be is, is good information – comes from the top. And what I mean by the top is it comes from these genetically gifted anabolic, anabolically enhanced bodybuilders. So it's like what they do is what everybody tries to do. But what they do works really well for that category of person, which most people, which is, you know, high, super high fucking intensity, kill yourself in the gym, and then rest for a week type of workout. Well, that, Whereas that, for most people, it doesn't work. That and even like, so I, I know for sure, like the number one thing that has kept me from becoming huge or what what, got, what took me from being the skinny 170 pound kid to being as big as a 240 pounder was 100% nothing to do with steroids and everything to do with nutrition. I shouldn't say 100%. Every, almost everything to do with nutrition. You know, and I remember when we first met and talked with Ben uh, Pakolsky and this was like, this was such an aha moment for me because I've always known that about myself, but then it really made me piece it together for someone like him. Like a guy like that, his, that is so much bigger than I am. It has so much more muscle than I do. Only having to consume 3,500 calories was just like mind boggling. What an advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huge advantage. Huge, 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 huge for me, for a guy like me. You get more out of the same, you get more out of less fuel. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I cannot, I cannot, be 230 plus pounds and not be consuming north of 4,500 calories. It's impossible. The moment I let off the throttle calorie wise, I would just, now this made it, now there's obviously, there's always a flip to every, or another side to it, right? This made it easy for me to cut. Once I put all the hard work into getting that much size, man, once I just kind of laid off some meals and restricted, my body would just plummet. You know who blew me away with that? Who completely blew my fucking mind with that? Was when we went and hung out with Robert Oberst over. We did like three days, right? And saw how he ate. I we all I was, out, we all out ate. I him. was expecting. I was expecting like this dude's gonna eat everything. And yeah. remember, we're all prepared. Like, all right, bro, whatever you want us to <laughs> yeah, buy. We we're gonna have it around because he's gonna get angry. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna eat me. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. He ate like he probably ate three thousand calories a day. Maybe. Maybe some days were like less. And he's a massive human being yeah. how much does he weigh he's like 300 and something yeah he's gotta be like yeah upwards of 380 or something he's yeah. just a big dude and big strong dude and then remember we talked i talked to him about it. i'm like you know bro i said and i remember telling him like if you want to eat more i thought he was being polite you know because yeah. we're buying all the food right and i'm like if you want to eat more you totally can dude and he looked at me he's like i actually don't eat that much people are surprised and it's funny because had i not lived with him for three days Never would have believed him. Right. Yep. That was like the Ben Pakulski thing for yeah. me. Seeing guys like Ben Pakulski, seeing guys like Robert Oberus, who have the ability to eat that low of calories and, and be, be that size. Like, no, my body just let. And that, this is and this is where everyone's genetically different. Like, I'm not saying this is for everybody. Like, if you're, but if you're a kid, this is also why. Since day one on this show, that when we were kind of like the anti-protein movement in the bodybuilding world, I always kind of push back because. And, and I'm dealing with it again right now. Like I'm having to include shakes into the diet and stuff like that to make sure that I'm hitting these yeah. these protein levels of 180 to 200 grams of protein. Otherwise, when I hit these 150, 140 days, the way my body works, I lose I lose body fat and I lose muscle. Mm-hmm. Like it's just I don't have one of those body types where I can just lean out and it just shreds body fat and I hang on to every bit of yeah. muscle. It my my muscle really needs that nutrients mm-hmm. and this is. The variants that we all have. Some people aren't like that. Some people can eat fifty to sixty grams. You can, you can, there's vegan bodybuilders 
that eat 60. I always trip off those guys, Which it, it pisses I me. I just saw one the other day. Someone shared it. And they, it was like they a vegan strongman. They tagged us, and they were like, you know, could this be true or this or that? And it's like, absolutely. The, yeah. it's the, There's the, outliers all over the Yes, place. the variance of humans is fucking ridiculous. We're all so uniquely different. Mm. And you may have a body type that can eat 50 grams of protein, and you hold on to 180 pounds of fucking lean mass. Well, good for you. I am not that guy. Yeah. Now, normally that guy or girl struggles to lose body fat. That's just kind of how it works, right? They're they're mm-hmm. what's great about their body is they look at weights and they pack on muscle. Yeah. Their problem is they could run their ass off on a treadmill and they still hang on to all this mass. And then you get the freaks that can do it all. I, I had this dude, I've talked to him about him before, and I can't remember his name. One day I'll remember, but he worked my front desk late at night at the 24 hour fitness in Salinas. And this fucking dude, man, I'd see him eat, and he would eat like a pop tart or like a ninety nine cents cheeseburger. Oh, we had a train. And I, Justin I, remembers a trainer that used yep. to work for us like that. And I ta- jacked on Taco Bell. And I talked to him oh, like, yeah. I remember Going I sat down. McDonald's I sat like, down with him because I saw him doing. He was doing skull crushers, okay, with two twenty five. So the bar, the bench press bar, two forty five on each side, good form. And I remember, and he was jacked. And I remember thinking like, this, I'm like, he must be on every steroid known to man. Yeah. So I took him aside, became friends with him, and I'm like. Dude, I'm like, how do you, God, like, why are you so, like, I never see you eating or whatever. And he's like, to be honest with you, I don't have a lot of money, which is true. We didn't, we didn't pay him much because he was a late night front desk guy. He's like, I can't afford to eat a lot or whatever. He's like, when I can't eat more, I gain more muscle. So every once in a while, I buy him lunch. And sure enough, motherfucker would grow every time I buy him lunch. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. craziest genetics I'd ever seen in my entire life. Right. But, those people definitely do exist. No, there are there. I mean, and most of the people that we all aspire to look like and be like on these covers of magazines and that are mm. the bodybuilding world. I and this is the thing too that like you know I know that we have people on our forum that love to jab at me about not having the body type. It's like fuck you, bro. I'll tell you right now, I do not have a bodybuilder body type. I've worked my fucking. You, ass. There's two things you have working for you for genetics. Like I'll, I'll tell you right now, honestly. Small God, waist. Well, well, hold on. Small waist, wide shoulders, and you have long muscle bellies. Right. Those, are, those are the three things that work for you. Right. So everything else in terms of like ease of building muscle, on, you've been doing this for a long fucking time. Right, right. Yeah. So it's not, it's by no, I do not have, and there's guys w- for sure that are my peers right. that, man, my boy Sean, dude, I think is just, that kid has looked like that since he was in high school too. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. Wicked Sean. He's got crazy, oh, yeah. crazy lines. He is, he is literally a, a fucking like- Why is he not the like top, like number one dude? Because he dude, should be. He did some shit way back when. Oh, that's the on politics? The, that's on the internet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they, I, I know that's why. Otherwise, he has the most ridiculous physique in the game. It's, it's not even compared. He shits on Jeremy Bundy. Yeah, I know. He does. He shits on Jeremy Bundy. There's a Jeremy video Bundy. about that. Yeah. Is there a video about that? No, I was just kidding. Oh, I was like, uh, no, there's not a video about that. I thought that. it was the, 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 the video. No, no, no. Sean, the, uh, Sean's, look at that, bro. He looks like that year round. Yeah. Just yeah. filthy, dude. He, yeah. Damn. He looks like an action figure all the time. It's not Photoshopped. He looks like that. I hang out with I've seen him a billion times. I trained him for one of his shows. And the guy is just a fucking freak, dude. He should be he should be the men's physique. But I know like I, I know the politics and I know he's been hated on for a long time. And I feel so bad because I know the guy goes to the gym like every day trying to work on these weaknesses. They tell him motherfucker does not have a weakness. Mm. He does not have a single weakness. And he's got boulders for calves. You don't even see him right now oh, in that shit. picture, but his, his calves look like basketball. Now, does he do that too, or he doesn't have to eat that much, or does he have to get all crazy with his food? No, he doesn't have to get crazy with his food at all. The, he was on a very modest diet when we were training. Like, he's he's crazy, man. Mm, awesome. What are you looking at, Doug? Wow. <laughs> <That's> my, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Whoa, Go Doug, down man. the page a little, and there's yeah. some yeah. surprises. Whoa. Uh, Whoa. Well, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to save that, that page there. That's on Google? Yeah. It's probably because of the word wicked. Wicked, you know, it's a, uh, that's a porn. Um, is that yeah? yeah Shout company. out to our boy. No yeah, doubt, this yeah. should be the should be the yeah. if if <laughs> if bodybuilding was judged correctly, and I dare somebody to get on here and oh, fucking challenge me on this that right that Sean Sean does not have a more symmetrical physique than Jeremy Buendia. Fucking come at me with that. Oh, 100%. There, I agree you know, with you. The no. dude does not have a weakness on his entire physique. No, I agree with you. I, I uh, Justin, I wonder what your grams of protein are at right now with car. They must be through the roof because yeah. that's the prime. It's have you figured like them out? 1.5, something like that. Uh, what are, per how, pound. You, how many, you have how many pounds a day? One and so, a half? Yeah, one and a half. Is that what you're averaging? Mm-hmm. So what's one and a half that's, pounds? Of, that's no, all. You, no, 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 no. I ramped up to two. Yeah. So two that's pounds. Not much two. at all. Yeah, how, yeah, but how much protein would that be? Two pounds of meat. I'll t- uh, that's a decent amount. 
Uh, uh, fuck. Is that 200? 200 grams? Yeah. By two pounds? Yeah. We'll figure every eight ounces is about 50. Mm -hmm. So that goes in. So two pounds is... uh, 16. So what did that do the math? Did you do it, Doug? Yeah, 200. 200. Oh, wow. Yeah, about 200. Hmm. That's what I figured. So So that's not bad. So two pounds, you're getting yeah. two pounds. Yeah. How do you break it up right now? I'm breaking it up into three. So in the morning, I'll have like leftover from last night. I grilled. I'll do like a, you know, a steak in the morning. I'll uh, I'll do like a steak like uh, around. <laughs> see, he's gonna tell me different. I do steak I do and then steak I'll do a, and then I do a little steak. more steak after uh, <laughs> uh, afternoon lunch. I, I think, don't get some I think, more steak. Oh, let me predict what the yeah, next yeah, meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have some steak. Yeah, there's some steak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then some hamburger like, meat. He was like thinking real hard on that. Like, bro, is it really uh, hard to think about what yeah, you're doing yeah. for your diet? It is when you're carb depleted. <laughs> yeah. Are you feeling? It's hard for me to think. Are you feeling that right now? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. It goes in waves, dude. Yeah. Like sometimes I feel really sharp, you know, yeah. and then sometimes I'm like, I'll wake up in the morning and it's just like, oh my God, I, I feel super cloudy and like lethargic. Oh, so. What are the things you're liking about what you're doing? And what are the things you're not liking about what you're doing? I like the simplicity of it. I like, um, yeah, no shit. Of course. that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't Let me write care your meal for plan it too for much. Yeah. What about? I mean, what about your your sleep stuff? What about your painting the toilets? What about? I like, do like okay, digestion. Yeah. Digestion's about- great. Okay, so I'll I'll go through this part of it. Like I I do feel like everything is um like it, it, my digestion's working out great. Like I don't have heartburn. I don't have like any kind of gas or indigestion or anything like going on with that. Like I could just I eat meat and then it's like. You know, it's almost like I'm just, it's a functional thing. Like I'm, I'm eating it's for function and that's it. And that's, so there's no like cravings. There's no, like, I, I guess that's another good thing is I'm not really craving anything now that I got through sort of the first initial days of like not having carbs and like, um, I guess I'm, st- I'm still eating fat, you know, from from the steaks, but like, are you and you're doing fatty cuts? Fatty cuts. Yeah. So I, I've actually Rib-eye and stuff. That's that's the only thing I've been like having variety with is like I'll alternate and I'll do like a different cut of meat, and uh, I'd know, be like ribeye and, and tri tips every day. and tri tip. So I had tri tip um, New York last night, and uh, that's actually got like a pound and a half at night. So I, I kind of been trying to alternate the amount, the volume, all you know, for one meal versus like you know spread it out and so today i'm probably going to do less I'll like probably do like a one pound today but like more towards the end of the day yeah and then tomorrow i'll go back to two and then like spread it out throughout the so day. here's now, what you could do you could buy some here's what i recommend to you try this out buy some chicken livers mm-hmm. and uh, ground them up or grind them up and mix them with some uh, ground beef mm-hmm. can you make deep, yourself some can patties. deep fry are you allowed to deep fry you're not supposed to use oils. You oh, know? you can't even use oil? Uh, I mean, you could do it in ghee if you really want to, you know, but... Can you deep fry in ghee? I don't know. See, I, I haven't been, like, totally lard? strict what about with it. Like, I've put butter on, you know, <laughs> as far as, like, what do you call that technique as you saute sort of um, mm. that style? So I've done Flambe. that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, whatever, but... So I've done I've done that, but uh, just for different flavors and different spices and I, stuff. I think he could cook, he can cook in lard. Can he yeah, do that? Maybe. Yeah, you can. Can you do that, Doug? Can you fry in like lard? Yeah. 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 So yeah. duck fat. You can get duck fat. Yeah, or, that's what you lard. should. That's oh, what you yeah, should do. I'll do that. Then. Get some yeah. fried. You do some fried chicken like yeah, that. Yeah, do, yeah, some sh- do some. Do some. Well, how like you gonna fry, What are you gonna batter the chicken with? Yeah. Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> bacon to me is candy at this point you know like if What's i'm your snack yeah if i if i'm in a pinch like i have actually like you, wait, a bunch of bacon flour? I've already cooked. No? dude how much money are you, you are you sending to, yeah, you know. to butcher box right now with dude all that? i am i got i got butcher the, box the extra you. big butcher box like so you can add in even more oh they make a big a super size yeah, box you have one where you can add more to it and so i did that uh for this month specifically uh to ramp up my meat and so a Hundred percent of our butcher box com- commissions may be coming from. It's Justin. probably just coming from me. <laughs> just as and anybody else is in my. Doug's uh, over there cashing the commissions. Check. He's like, man, we're killing it on butcher box. Yeah, I just think it's. A, I think it's just anybody Justin. else carnivore <laughs> dieting out there. Yeah, thank That's you. Hilarious. Yeah. Well, you know, with back on the on the anabolics versus training natural. What are some ways you would change the way someone trains if they were on anabolics versus natural? Because I get this question a lot. Like, well, you 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 get away with pushing volume, so push push at a order, faster basically. rate, yeah. right? You know, what I'm saying like where you have to be much more strategic and you have to listen to the body. Like example, what you were talking about earlier, and what I'm going through right now is, so I can't. Uh, when I was training anabolically, I could I could literally map out my entire next three months 
where I don't do that. You have to wait by you have yeah, to I wait like more. how I feel. Yeah, no, I'm like, oh, I think I'm gonna. This is what I'm planning on doing mm-hmm. tomorrow, but I might wake up and be like, oh shit, I definitely overdid it yesterday from this, which means I need to kind of change this up a tiny bit because it was too much. So I, I find there's more of that going on for sure. So you have to change that up. You know, I, I'm now, uh, before, I, I'm, I'm not a big supplement guy as it is. Uh, I am taking advantage of the fact that we are sponsored by companies like Organifi and I can get a hold of like turmeric and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm using that more than I ever would like to see if that actually helps yeah. like the recovery process for me. Um, it's kind of early on to see, like I've, I've been consistent with your four and four. Uh, cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm Obviously, I'm going through the pills pretty fast that way. But, uh, and it's hard cause I have, what I'll, what I'll do right now is I'll be very consistent about it and then I'll take it out and then see how I feel. See doing. Yeah. See if it's, if it's really helping that much. Yeah. I would say the same thing. I'd say if someone came to me and was like, Hey, I'm going to be on anabolics now. How should I change my workout? I would say, okay, well let's go harder mm-hmm. and let's add a little bit of volume and, and feel it out and see how the body works. I think you probably get away with more of the pumping workouts and less of the heavy strength type workouts. I also think that you can get away with just a higher surplus of calories. So more if, of it's going to go to muscle. Right, yeah. If you're if you're anabolic 24/7, then getting up and having a peanut butter jelly sandwich at 2 o'clock in the morning is okay because there's a good chance that it'll get It's also way easier to get shredded without losing muscle. That's a big fucking difference. That that, that now, is hard to get shredded without losing muscle. So naturally. this is the one that I'm most mm. interested in because I already know that's a challenge for my body. Like I already know that I'm the guy who, as soon as he starts leaning out, muscle falls off. So that is what I'm most curious. And then this is also why when I said when we're doing this competition, I said, you know, I have my own personal goals. Like as much as I'm competing with you fuckers, I also don't want to just get shredded to get shredded. And sure. then I lose fucking eight pounds of muscle sure, sure. just trying to prove a point that I can get shredded. So I have serious goals of, I mean, I, I've set goals to myself to actually add muscle if possible over the six weeks while I'm also trying to lean out. Mm-hmm. That would be a huge win for me. But if yeah. I can just maintain it and then actually lo- reduce body fat, I'll be really happy. I'm nervous I won't. I'm mm-hmm. nervous yeah. that I, I know my body pretty well that when I start calorie it restricting, hard. it gets really, really tough. Because yeah, so. that's, I mean, that's one of the biggest things. You see somebody that's like super shredded, like they, they've they been on this massive cut, but they still have really like bubbly, mu- like yep. pronounced yeah. muscles. Yep. Like to me, like, and I know there's outliers out there that can actually cut for a long period of time and still look like that, but like there's not many, dude. And mm-hmm. that is the, a total like dead giveaway to me most mm-hmm. of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. When if you're somebody who's running on a treadmill and you still got fucking boulder <laughs> shoulders and stuff like that. Right. But I, a lot of times that too is the, the genetic component. Cause even when, even on anabolics, if that's why I had to be careful on how hard I cut and like, I wasn't a hard cardio pusher because I knew as soon as I just restricted calories, I instantly start losing, you well, know, and we'll, even on anabolics, I would lose muscle. But we'll it's, see. What, we'll see what happens because I, I, if this kick starts me and gets me super focused and in, in that thing, I may just attempt to get super shredded, uh, but I may not also because I remember how shitty that felt. And so we'll see what happens after this. Well, don't you have a time. don't you have a trip? Not that long. I know you have a trip right yeah. after that. Don't yeah, you? but you, you know, know getting see. super like I can get okay, fine, eight percent body fat. I'm gonna look good. I'm talking about getting down to five, four percent. That shit gets nasty, uh, and I get yeah, really I get super cranky, dude. Dude, I get stringy. Like my, I, I get striations at high body fats. When I get that lean, I look. It doesn't look good unless I have my shirt off and it's the right. Otherwise, I just look like whoa, that poor dude over there. Yeah, someone yeah, throw him some, some food. food. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. I so know. yeah, you have the you have the you know the gaunt face. Oh, for I'll sure. get really nasty. So we'll see what happens. See if my girlfriend's still attracted to me. That's <laughs> yeah, the big thing. Yeah. Katrina's like, oh, don't lose your ass. I don't want to see you lose your ass. I like right where it's at right now. <laughs> Dude, I swear yeah, yes. God. Well, you know Putting when you, you in juicy pants. When you think about it, like where, especially now, because I already know that I've started to lean out since we started. This is a, this is a very healthy. This is, I think, a good topic around what we're talking about too. Is it's so funny the standards that the the fitness space has put on what a, a healthy quote unquote like yeah. I, I look uh, like our YouTube so disproportionate. Right, like our, our YouTube, right, which is fucking trollville, dude. God um, damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what? This is a shout out. This is I'm, I'm calling all forum members that love to talk shit. Like get take, on the YouTube and get our backs, man. Yeah, dude, it takes They every, talk so much shit. Yeah, yeah. I you know, we 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 don't pick up the brick. We don't we, we don't really engage with them otherwise it would waste all of our time that we're it putting into. We also encourage more assholes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I tell you what, the fucking YouTube just lays into it. And a lot of the comments I'm getting is just like 
you know, like I'm like I'm a punk, like I don't fucking look good, like I'm not fit. I'm just like, <laughs> listen here, <laughs> motherfucker. Just mean. You know? Yeah, I don't re- I don't respond, right? I don't even respond to it or anything. But it's just funny that somebody would look at my body at, you know, 13, 14% that I'm at and go like tell make you think that and I'm a 37 year old man, right? Like, and who cares? They don't know anything about hormonally what I've gone through. Even if none of that stuff aside, like I still look like an active fit person. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. can still see my muscles in my <laughs> my body. I'm healthy as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like that's really crazy. The standard that we've put on on the space that if you don't look Bro, this- they do that to pro bodybuilders. Go on a pro bodybuilders page and you'll see underneath weak quads. Weak delts. I'm like, he's 280 pounds shredded. What the fuck right. are you talking about? Right. But it's just, it's, it's. They were talking, they talk shit to. They on just all talk shit it. to get a rise. Yeah, that's what they do. You'll see the most terrible, racist, sexist, horrible comments ever on YouTube. It's just where they live. It's okay. Because you know it's, I mean? it's kids. That's why. I think it's mostly kids that are attracted to the YouTube platform. So you get a lot yeah. of fucking little trolls. On yeah, there. they do. Yeah. 16 years old talking It's just shit. like when you're playing video games online and, you know, you're, it's just it, the words that come out of these kids, like, you're just like, oh my God, yeah. dude. Like, your this parents still need exists. to beat you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> slap you into the wall. Shit. Anyway, check it out. Uh, we all have our individual social media pages on Instagram. Uh, mine is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Also, we have free guides. A lot of free guides. There's like 12 of them. Some of them teach you how to burn more body fat, do high-intensity interval training, build particular body parts. You can find all of them at mindpumpfree.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.